Cordue. Okay, welcome everybody. This is the Green Valley, Arizona Camera Club's Multimedia Special Interest Group, and we are um, uh, going to hopefully enjoy people's videos today. So, do we have anybody ready to show something? Oh, good. Okay. Uh, yeah, I've got a very short trailer, a minute and a half. <clears throat> Okay. A, a couple of other ideas to pass on as well. Oh. Excellent. Anybody else have anything going? Larry, oh, are you in Canada ready. still? Well, yes. Yes, yeah. I am. Yeah. Sorry, I have to hit the space bar. I yeah. put oh. it on mute. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. Well, I guess, Larry, you're on. Oh, wait, no, 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 maybe I didn't. Let me see if I did. Um, okay, now you can. It's a while since I've done this, so <clears throat> stand by for problems. Okay, share screen, <clears throat> share sound, optimize, and I've lost, it. oh, there it is, okay. Is it going? Not yet. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so did you have it open hmm. and ready to, sh to play? Yeah. Right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, I did. Um, okay. Let me just go back here and make sure I got everything clicked that should be clicked. I thought I had. Uh, get up there. Okay. So I'm sharing sound. I'm optimized for video. Right. Um, oh, I guess I didn't click share down at the bottom. That's it. There we go. Okay. I I didn't know I had to click it twice. <laughs> Sorry ah, now that. we're coming up to your okay. desktop. Okay. Here now we go. Now we're really seeing your desktop. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Who built these impressive structures in the barren desert? Why? There were four major settlements occupied by the ancestral Puebloans. Canyon de Chez, Keat Seal, Mesa Verde and Chaco Canyon. Let's look at this interesting civilization. Okay, so that's, am I on or what do I have to do now? Uh, okay, stop screen sharing and it should be up at the top. Ah, oh, there it is, yeah, okay, gotcha. Okay, is everything back where it should be? I think so. We just need to have people turn their cameras back on. Okay. Um, <laughs> so you can talk to people. <laughs> okay, so this is a 17-minute film that I have offered to BART for the Aravaca Film Festival this year. Hopefully it will go again. So that's what I've created the trailer for. Okay. That was nice. It's an interesting <laughs> part of the world. When is the uh, Aravaca Film Festival, if it happens? Uh, typically, first weekend in March, I think. Okay, so the, give me the title again, because that went by fairly quickly. Mysteries of the Ancestral Puebloans.
you've done a lot of research then. Yeah. Yeah, I did. And uh, I had a couple of major visits there too, one overnight. Yeah. So did you vis visited all four. I'm sorry? Did you visited all four. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. I've, several times to some of them, yeah. Not all at once. <laughs> no. No, this is scattered over, gee, I don't know, five or six years. Yeah. Every I, I originally went down to the Southwest to fly my glider out of uh, um, Minden, Nevada, and uh, kept going back there and uh, Ely, Nevada, and Parowan, Utah. And uh, the first time I went down, we did a lot of touring afterwards, and I started discovering all these fantastic places to visit, and every time I went, I found other places I wanted to add to another trip. So we just, as I say, went for five, six, seven years. I can't, can't remember how much. So we saw a lot of it. We loved it. Is there a theme for the film festival? I don't know whether there even is one. <laughs> what? I, I don't know whether there even is a film festival. Oh, I haven't okay. heard anything back from Bart. Okay. <laughs> hmm. On to your, on your, um, your trailer there specifically did okay you you named all four of them in turn but I, those not all of the pictures seemed to correspond to the names as you went through yeah they did okay <laughs> yeah so they built kind of similar style cave cliff dwellings yeah Except Keith Seal, that one is up on a on a plateau. It's no, 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 no. No, it's at the end of a long river valley. I can't remember the name of it, but I had to, <clears throat> excuse me, hike five and a half hours into it. And when I came out of it, in fact, uh, shortly after I got there and I camped overnight there, we had a major storm. And there was another couple that came in at the same time I did. And I got in and got my tent up before the rain hit. They didn't. So they joined me in my tent until the rain ended. And then when it ended, we uh, had a look at getting across to the ruins. And a, uh, a volunteer ranger had passed us on the way in. And she was on the other side of the river. And this river is flowing heavily. And we're thinking, should we really go across? And we got her calling out to us, say, come on, I'll bring in, it's okay. So we waded across about thigh high deep water. And then the next morning when I went back, it was down this same river. And I'd been warned about quicksand in this river and uh, I found some. I'm glad you're still with us. <laughs> well, which, which one is the one that um, is on a flat? You had, wow. you had a couple of pictures of it. Well, there's um, Mesa Verde, you know, is built on, on the various plateaus in, uh, let's see, where is it near? Near Cortez, Colorado. Um, Chaco Canyon is just north, the northern end yeah. of Arizona. And uh, Chaco Canyon is out in the middle of the desert, really. It's in the Chaco Valley, I guess it's called. Did you get out to Hoban Week? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's got Isn't some nice Chaco stuff. in uh, New Mexico? Yeah, yeah, it's right in the very center. It's I'm trying to think how to describe it. It's not near anything. It's, yeah. uh, oh, <coughs> is it Farmington up north there, I think, is probably the closest. When I went there the first time, I on most of these trips, I was dragging my glider trailer behind me. So I wanted to go to someplace. I had to find a place to leave it. The first year we were there, I found a gas station or someplace that would let me leave it. And when we went back, I wanted to go overnight because you can hike up on the, on the ridge overlooking all the structures. So I had to try and find a place to leave the glider overnight, glider trailer. And uh, I went up to Farmington and I said, well, they're never going to let me on there. This is just after 9-11 so uh, I'm not getting out of that airfield and I discovered another little airfield on the map so I drove over to it and it's got a fence around it it's locked so we're sitting in the camper <clears throat> with the trailer tied on behind trying to figure what the heck we're going to do next 
and a guy comes walking over to the trailer or to the camper and says, do you want to fly your glider out of here? <laughs> and I said, no, I just want to park it. He says, oh, okay. Well, <clears throat> come on. Uh, he let me in through the gate. He says, you can park it in front of my hangar, you know, and this is how you get back in to get it out. So it uh, worked just fine as it, as it was. You go to these tiny little airports, people are really good to you. It's great. I have a couple of comments on your trailer, Larry. <clears throat> yep. One, I think it was really effective how you zoomed in on each area and had a little something to say about it. Um, as a trailer, I think it's effective. It's not obvious it's a trailer though from the beginning. So maybe if you had a short title, uh, you know, maybe black screen, it just said coming soon or something. And okay. they go into the trailer. Okay. Um, your narrative sounded a little bit back in the background and a little hollow. So I think if you got closer to the mic and maybe just increase the volume just a tad, it would uh, be more upfront a little better. And then the third thing is the final title over the, uh, I guess it was uh, like a Google Earth background, tended to yeah. get a little lost in the background because you had a kind of fancy uh, lettering on the title. Yeah. If you put some uh, kind of half screen or a grayish block behind the title, it'll help stand out a little more. Okay. Um, Shadow. I think th this is stuff that I, I, I didn't, well, I just spent a lot of time on it more than I should have probably, but I was just pulling stuff out of the original of the original the full thing and uh yeah I, I can see what you're saying on those things i i had i had had a uh, a background behind the title at one point and decided i didn't need it but i'll look back at that one otherwise i'm i'm looking forward to seeing the full uh, presentation i think it ought good. to be great good thank you hey larry yeah um, i have a question for you i know on some of your presentations, you put up maps, yep. and then you had a line yep. that followed the route. Then I'd like to know how you take draw that line that would follow the route. Okay, um, you use layers. What what are you editing in? Uh, right now, um, DaVinci Resolve. Okay. I, I don't know of DaVinci Resolve, but I'm sure it's got all the features of um, Premiere Elements. Oh, it does. Yeah. So basically, you uh, you put your line on a layer over top of your map, and then you crop your your line. Um, ah, and then from one out. end to the other, and then uncrop. You know, right? Like okay. like a better trend. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. There's another way to do it. Uh, it's a little labor intensive, and that is uh, using uh, points. You draw a route um, on Google Earth, and once you get the whole thing drawn, it's you know it could be hundreds of little points that are connected with the line, and then you record your screen. So you start the recording, you go into properties for that line and you delete the line and it, it disappears back to the, the start. You stop the recording, you import that clip into DaVinci or Premiere or whatever, and then you reverse the clip. And when you run it, it looks like the line is drawing. Okay. We use that in one of our, uh, our videos. The one, the last one we did for uh, Point Sublime, we did that. Yeah, I looked at that after you demonstrated it one time, Brian. I agree, it was too labor intensive. <laughs> <laughs> Simple but, is better. But I'm what, what I had what I had originally worked with was um, was doing it all in Premiere Elements, and uh, I picked Gary Gary's brain a couple of years ago about uh, what is it? The uh, art um, starts with A. Uh, God, I can't remember the name of the uh, uh, artistic, no, not artistic, 
You're muted, Gary. Affinity Designer. That's the one. Thank you. Yeah. That's what happens when you get old. You remember the first letter and the rest of the rest is lost. <laughs> hey, don't complain. At least you've got the first letter. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and, and Affinity uh, is way better than anything else I've used for that. So I really recommend it. it. It had a bit of a learning curve, but Gary held my hand through a lot of it. So it helped. Ah. Well, you could also do lines with uh, animation done in either Keynote if you're on a Mac or PowerPoint on a PC, and then uh, save that as a, as a small movie and then bring it in on a layer into uh, your movie editor. Yeah, that's true. Uh, those are like an animation. Okay. I have those and and on an in iMovie you can also do it you just have to put keyframes and next keyframe and next keyframe and the next keyframe and and move uh you know you, you put a keyframe you move your line uh and so forth and you can have animation as far as like the little like larry you do with uh with your little airplane or something you can move that I've done that. Um, I've I've figured out how to do it, but I have never done it in a actual presentation. <laughs> so, anybody else? Anybody else have something for the just general information? Um, what's going on? Uh, what you're working on, but not ready to show anything. Yeah, Jim, go ahead and unmute yourself. Will there be anything over at the camera club soon with the SIG? There was supposed to be today, I thought. Yeah, I went well, there. I went there this morning and there was nobody there, but there was a giant coffee stain on the carpet in our room so i don't know what's going on Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> blood stain no, it, it i was think until the thing gets coffee. over there there's got to be somebody who's going to take charge for in-person meetings of the thing who's there and right now we don't have anybody i thought todd was going to do it but i guess that's not. what i thought too I think Todd, Todd is right now missing <laughs> Yeah, Todd had a conflict today. That's why I'm uh, the one running it. Um, and uh, it was decided a couple of weeks ago that this week would be just Zoom. And so that's up to you folks to decide um, what's going to happen from here on out and whether or not you're going to do it in the, in the club and have a hybrid um or or what so i think uh, that needs to be a discussion right now as to where we go next week and so forth my mom's internment in arlington finally got scheduled for october 19 and i'll you know be, by the time i drive down there and and see some people down in that area and come back it'll probably be november before i get to arizona yeah. We'll, um, Susan and I are going over to the camera club at some point in an afternoon when there's nobody there. And we will do a short uh, how to video on how to set up a hybrid. And when that's ready, then we'll be a, ready to dump the box of stuff and the video, and somebody can take it over. But uh, yeah. anybody notice in the paper the article about? Uh, people being turned away from the local hospital because of no room uh, in the ICU. Wow. So uh, I Susan believe. and I are backing away from public contact for a while. That's a good idea, Brian. I'm glad to yeah. hear that, really. Yeah. You you know, one of the problems care. is even though we've been vaccinated, there are so many break cases now with the Delta variant. Yeah. So, 
Yeah, I've had the uh, the two vaccinations and the booster, and my system is so unpredictable that I'm not taking any chances. Oh, I don't blame you. Yeah. While we're all here, I would like to say um, thanks for the critiques that people have been offering on shows, uh, including my own. And when I do show that at the end of the session today, I hope that you see your input was taken to heart and had a positive effect. Because <laughs> I, I redid that um, Noel Wood video, the one of the little kid in the camp, whose uh, family, of course, don't want to see him on YouTube, but they'd love to see him. Yeah, but he, he knows that bears are safe. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, we look forward to seeing your uh, your second version also. So I don't know, maybe this is going to be a short meeting and we'll just stop the recording and um, go to Holly. Yeah, you can come back on after if you want, if you think it might be useful. Well, but... that, that cuts the video into two pieces. Um, okay. But did we decide on anything about next week? I thought we're going to skip next week because we're doing mm -hmm. alternate weeks. Right? Oh, I forgot that. Okay. Yeah. Okay, skip. Okay, right. And then the following week, I will be in Iceland. Ooh. Sorry. <laughs> hopefully get some action on one of the volcanoes. Yeah, hopefully. Definitely the geothermals. Okay, 20, the, so the next meeting is going to be on the 27th. Right. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, um, let's just hope we see all of you on the 27th, maybe with some uh, things to show. And with that, I'm going to uh, stop the recording. Do you do someplace down here? Da here we go. Um, 